Well, I finally bought a new battery for my uh, Trend AirShield Pro. Quite noisy in here. Yes, hello and welcome. Not too much preamble today. Ash. Going to be a bowl. Probably. Especially as I've got such a large hole in the centre here. Let's chuck it up. Uh, mounting it on a recess just because it's quick and easy. Not going to spin it too fast to begin with, given it's quite a quite a chunk. But I do need to get a few things organised. Get that out of the way. <coughs> I think we can take that picture in picture off. Right, yeah, so new battery. Let's hope it lasts a bit longer than the 20 minutes or so the old one was giving me. And I also hope you can hear me. Looks like you can. My favourite 3 8 gouge. Yep, I'm the proud owner of a micro motor. And finally, we can get on to a bit of colouring. Cloister Medium and Joe Sonia Pale Gold, which will be the first colour going on, but not the last. Trying to work it down into the bottom not going for totally even coverage but trying to get to the bottom of each of the of the texturing
I had a go at trying to remove some of the scorch marks. I probably was cutting a bit too fast. That wouldn't be like me, would it? So not have enough patience to wait and go a bit slower. Over this, I'm going to use some stains and I just want the gold to give a bit of sheen behind those stains. It's not something I would do for an object that was going to be handled a lot. But for something decorative, I think this is a very, very nice effect. You can use a whole host of different metallic paints underneath it. I haven't tried this medium, which adds some transparency to the colour. I haven't tried it with any other manufacturer's paints, but it should, I guess, have a similar effect. I'll have to try it one day. So many things still to try. Leave that to dry and then get some stain over it. Stop, leave it alone. I can't help myself. Right. Oh, clean this brush off. Right, that's it for tonight. Bye bye. It's the morning of the day after. And uh, it's looking pretty good, actually. So next stage is to get some red on it. Um, so that will be done. I'll use the same pot with the gold because it doesn't matter if it gets mixed up a little bit. Uh, I've got to find some red. That's orange. There we go, a bit of red. I'm going to use this just as it is, undiluted. I could put it on with an airbrush, but then I'd have to put my mask and everything on. And not everyone has airbrushes. It works just as easily doing it with a brush. So just feeding it in. Letting it run. And it will be something that gets built up. The first few coats will look a little pale in comparison to what it, the effect that I want to have. But you should be able to see still that the gold is showing through from the stain. I'm not too bothered about keeping it neat down here at the bottom because I'm going to turn a foot and probably colour it black. So, fun times. I might speed this up for you. I haven't done a bit of sped up motion for a long time. I don't mind if it doesn't get to the bottom of all of the little indentations. Those of the indentations that were quite dark are getting much darker, but that's interesting anyway. It gives it a bit of variation. Wouldn't want every hole to look the same. Right, no more talking and I'll speed up from here. Now that's had time to dry. I want to build up some more coats, uh, get it looking a bit richer, but not to the point where I'm going to completely obliterate the 
the gold. So let's see how we get on. And see it picking up on the top of the texture first. I don't want to fill all of the holes with it. Like I say, I want to keep some of the, the gold. I was about to call it silver then. Get some orange ready. Okay, so a bit of orange now. There, you can see the difference, I hope. Yes, yes, you can. Of course, you can see the difference between orange and red. What am I talking about? It's a good idea to note where you start when you're putting colour and stuff on. As you rotate it, can easily lose where you began. But I think I'm back, to, back at the beginning. I like the orange with the gold. It looks very nice. So if I use the brush, you know, rather than putting the tip in, running across the side. Yeah, around here it's a bit too orange. You know me, I like variety. Don't want it to all look the same. Coming back with a bit more red now. Not too much. Work some of the darker red in through some of that. Now, although it's spirit stain, you can get quite a lot of it out of your brush with just a bit of water. Most of the colour out. OK, leave it to dry. Right, so I've just given it a little bit of sanding. And now I want to focus it a bit. OK, so you can see lots of the gold still showing. And that sanding has given a much smoother top. Obviously, I can't sand down in the texture. And uh, I can put a bit more colour on, which is always a good thing. How many angles do you want to watch the colour going on from? And the reason for doing this, the sanding will have taken away some of the, um, the depth of the colour. But also it will just keep building up the richness of it. And that's what I really want to um, develop, the depth of the colour. There you go. See it much better now. So you can see there how it was catching on the top, not going down into there. I can stipple into it, but I don't particularly want uh, to cover everything up and make it all uniform. You know that's anathema to me. Now, in terms of finishing all this, I could spray lacquer into it. But I find often with lacquer, where there is a lot of um, texture, it can sometimes build up in that texture. And, and I don't like that. It, it loses something. So I'm going to experiment with a, with a wax finish on this one. I don't mind it being darker and more filled in at the bottom. That's going to be in shadow when it's finished anyway. 
but this is putting back a lot of the richness of the red which is what i really want do 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 be interesting to see how the wax copes with the with the texture of course the other alternative again it's tricky because it builds up gets stuck in crevices is oil and as i've got a, a new polishing brush for wax i think i should give that a try Right, drying time. He says putting some more on. Leave that to dry. And usual sanding sealer. right just cut that back very lightly with the orange nye web yeah put them on this paper plenty that's probably far more than i need so working that in right into the texture and with the wax that i'm using you can buff it straight away unlike microcrystalline waxes that often need to be left 20 minutes or so 20 minutes is a lifetime buffing time not going to obviously get the same kind of shine as you would with a lacquer It is a nice workout, that. There, so we're getting nice highlights burnishing on the edges. You can see the gleam of it as I turn it around. As I say, not as shiny as a wax fin, as a as a lack of finish there's something quite nice and warmer about wax all right that's enough stroking let's move on right so the next thing obviously is to turn it around and hollow it out now hollowing out is this going to be a finished one is it a keeper shall i hollow all of it out i guess we'll have to find out before i do that though there is one little tip my tail stock up i did mark the center but i'm going to put my live center in on the tail stock and bring that up and mark it with the actual tail stock but this tail stock that i use is a ring center and if i have a a hole that the ring center doesn't go into and if I show you that, you can see here that central hole is bigger than the center of my ring center. But that hole outside, the outer side, is the actual size of the ring center. So that is a better mark to leave in the bottom of it. But when I come to um, finishing it off, if I decided to keep that, obviously that. So now uh, 
I need to change chucks because that won't fit in my C jaws. And actually, if I come onto the overhead camera, there's one, two, re two good reasons it won't fit. It won't close up small enough. And also it bottoms out before the jaws meet this face here. Whereas the chuck that I'm putting it in, it doesn't. It's just about at its maximum, but it doesn't bottom out um, at the bottom of the jaws there. Very important that that doesn't happen. Otherwise, your chuck jaws are not doing their job. And there we go. Right. Only two pinions on this chuck. But you can see that's almost the ideal size. The jaws don't quite close up. If they did close up, they wouldn't be a complete circle. Uh, very important to get your jaws, the measurement of them and make your tenons the optimum size for the jaws, not the size of the piece of wood that they're on, but for the jaws that you're using. Right. Get a loose in my hand and that. You see how nicely this is cutting and how big a cut. Really, one of the advantages of this type of grind. I don't know if you've seen it, but Steve Jones has recently posted a wonderful video on tool presentation using the same tool, getting massive tear out and then beautifully burnished surface, just depending on how you present the tool. OK, that's done. Now, one way also of preventing a catch in that bottom is the flute now is at nine o'clock. If I had the flute anything less than oh, three o'clock, sorry, three o'clock that way, isn't it? Nine o'clock the other way. If I had it any other time, that bottom wing will catch on there and wallop. It will throw me back to the side. So just working the cloth around, shine starting to build up, yeah you can see it there, and then you just hold it on the outside to brush off any dust that was there. So I'm going back on with an Axminster chuck with their C jaws in and using a Longworth style chuck. Got a plate at the back which fits in to the C jaws. Going to also have it held between centres. So move the plates apart, the buttons move apart, push them back together and it gives a rough centre but we want it to be more than roughly centred. So there we go, now I can just pull these two plates together and tighten up one The alternative, of course, is to hold it up against a disc and turn the 
as much of the foot off as possible and then finish by hand. Okay, that's uh, time to move the tail stuff away. Now, very gently, very slowly. to finish on there clean that dusty bit off so just a case of loosening these off till they move freely and cradling the bowl at the same time Alternatives to this, of course, are cold jaws as well. Another way of reverse mounting. And that would come out of the chuck certainly more quickly than this. But if you're doing different size bowls, then you need to keep moving your buttons on cold jaws. This is the last one. Now we just come out. And good grief. It really, really is a completed project. Completely turned everywhere. Feels very nice in the hands with that wax. Obviously, it's not a super shiny finish um it's another light somewhere it's not in even i don't think it is shining on it a bit there that's better i am very pleased with that i like the shine i like the contrast of the colored outside warmth of the wood inside can't tell if that's a little tool mark or grain shall we say grain so pleased overall with the shape you can see the gold coming through it's got a very nice warm look and a warm feel to it and because of that little undercut you can see there the harder shadow of the rim very slightly narrower at the top than about an inch in very useful for scooping out your M&Ms or your chocolate coated peanuts or raisins or your cashew nuts or your peanuts or whatever people will put hand in bowls for these days maybe even coins right one or two close-ups and uh that's another project done yeah pleased with that uh, any comments leave them below more than happy to answer any questions that you've got um, and uh, until the next time thanks for watching so no funny end credits or funny stuff after the credits <coughs> But if you've got any questions about the stuff that was being used, hopefully this little segment will answer them. The texturing was done with a wonderful new bit of equipment, a 45,000 micromotor, micromotor N8, available from Wood Arts products <coughs> in the UK. 
link will be below. Uh, hand piece, it's got a burr in there just to keep the collet uh, the right shape. Very nice and easy to use. In comparison to things like a flex shaft, this coiled wire, very, very, very manoeuvrable. Changing the bit is as simple as just a twist and then drop one in. They recommend keeping a cutter in there when it's closed, I suppose, to stop the collet deforming under any kind of pressure. <coughs> so that was very nice and very easy to use. Probably I used it at too high a speed. It comes also with a foot control, which is a bit harder to use if you're um, standing up. And that will vary the speed. Um, so that's quite a useful little addition to it. Um, came with a couple of cutters, which I haven't used. Set of instructions, really quite straightforward. The cutter that I was using is a saber tooth burr on a <clears throat> an eighth of an inch shank. Uh, this has been cleaned up a few times. I had to um, get rid of some of the burn that I put on there, which I did with a little brass brush, and it doesn't seem to have affected it. The other two cutters that you saw me using were two very cheap, inexpensive and not brilliant um, bits of a kit. Uh, I wasn't very impressed with them when I bought them. They're very blunt. I've actually ordered some hopefully better quality ones, not in the same price range as the Sabretooth, but just to um, have a bit of fun playing around with. In terms of the colours, as I said in the main, I used video, I used Pale Gold from Joe Sonia. Um, I got this as a set with six other paints and some um, medium to thin it down for about £30 at Maker's Central, but that was three years ago. Really wonderful, great quality paint. And I used Kleister Medium from them, which uh, is something for faux finishes and special effects. I like it because it thins it down and makes a wash and a glaze rather than a solid colour. Main colour was done with chestnut spirit stains. You saw me use red and orange. Um, the orange, I think, certainly added something to it. I hummed and hard about going with some black on the outside to provide a bit more contrast and I decided against it. I'm still not sure if that was the right decision or not. But spirit stains, they're also available in the States, although I think Canada, you may find it a bit tricky still to get hold of them. I think they are available in Canada now. Um, but as you know, I love using them. Um, and I have here somewhere, I put it somewhere in easy reach. He says, I Yeah, filmed this bit before I actually did the brushing. But here we go, a lovely brush um, with a very nice handle to protect your knuckles. It's quite invigorating on a cool, damp autumn day. A hand polishing brush. You can keep it clean with soap and water. We'll see how clean it is after I've used it over this, um, over the stain. Feeling the finish. Just nearly ready for the wax, but not quite. Anyway, hope that has answered any questions you might have had about the uh, the equipment that I used. Okay, let's get back to finishing the video properly. Because as I said, this was actually done before I finished the video. Naughty, naughty man. 